So for you and I, it's not a matter of us being a star or having a wow factor or actually even thinking and making a judgment on our quality. Mm -hmm. The quality of, a me of our mediumship goes much deeper and has more response from the public than the evidence that someone lives in another world. It has to shine from within you. And I see many of you come here a little bit doubtful, a little bit anxious, not sure, and yet look how you've blossomed. Have you blossomed because you've become a better medium? Have you really? I don't think so. I think you've, become, you've blossomed because you've allowed that soul to actually prove to you it has a purpose in this life on earth that the soul has been allowed to reach out and touch the conscious mind of you and the subconscious mind of you and that mind that we can't really find a label for, the mind that is the soul. Your spirit has shone. So mediumship really, although yes, you do have to do it correctly, yes, you do have to be there for the spirit world. Yes, we do know that you've got to receive the yes and the no and I don't know. All those things are part, but they are only a fragment of the part. Because basically, I can't change your life. All I can do is invoke within you the power of thinking. So you will think and consider how you are in this world, how you respond to people in this world, how you are now allowing that soul of you to stand up in its light, beyond your doubts and your anxieties, standing up in the light, and you're beginning to speak the truth, the truth of spiritual values that no matter what, no matter where, no matter how you go to the other world, it will be that that you take with you. Helping people to understand that there is another world, that there is another task that's going to take place once we've left here, that we will still nevertheless be evolving in a greater degree to something beyond our understanding. So you see, that's the beauty of what we're doing. It has to change us that we might help to look at others. And until we've got to that point where our faith, our trust and our belief in that source within ourselves, then goodness gracious me, we are still struggling and we will never perfect the fullness of the diamond. So when you're looking at your mediumship in the future, just think it's but a facet, <clears throat> just but a small facet of what God has assigned me to do. So for those of you who can write, write. For those of you who can speak, speak. For those of you who can hold, hold. And for those of you who can love, love. And allow the wholeness of the soul and explore the density and the complexity of your life. Because it's a complex life. It's not a simple life. And the way is often very, very lonely. And <coughs> although you can have companionship of a partner or a husband or a wife, it's still a lonely time because you need your alone time to allow your soul to give you comfort, to allow your soul to be so strong within you that it can support the doubts and the anxieties that the conscious mind will give you. And I believe that God has assigned you that task to go forward and start to use your mediumship if you want to say, as God's tool. 
as God's proof that life continues after death and we can communicate. But let that tool go a bit further so that people can recognize that if God created you as the medium to communicate, you may be able to communicate with higher beings and therefore allow the people to listen and take your faith home with them. Because sometimes that's all you can do. You know, if you go back to the aim of spiritualism, the aim of spiritualism has nothing to do with mediumship, you know. If you look at the aim of spiritualism, because in the Lyceum Manual, which was written, I know, many, many years ago now, but is still relevant today, the aim of spiritualism is to perfect a complete atonement between man and God until every action, thought and deed is in accordance with his will. Now, where's mediumship in that? It's not, is it? It's not there. It's all about this trying to unfold the essence of spiritual power within the human being. And goodness gracious me, we need it in the churches as well as we need it in the world. So what tools can I leave with you for you to carry on with your self-esteem? Talk to your soul, talk to your spirit, and then just stop a little while and talk to the spirit world. Is my light bright enough for you? Have I lowered my need for you to be the compassionate person that's guiding me through all this? Do you know I have an absolute faith and belief in you every time I get on my feet? So you start then to move and think about your faith and your belief in you. Your self-esteem comes from another place, another source, and that source is within you. That no matter what goes on, whether it's a good demonstration or a bad demonstration, I delivered the quality of my soul to the spirit world and the quality of my soul to the people here. And if you can get to that point, then you'll move on. If you don't, then you'll always have this side of yourself where, yeah, I almost believe in me, mm -hmm. but not quite, okay? And don't look at your mediumship as the diamond Remember, it's only a facet of the service that God wants you to do.